Hi, my name is Paul Sargent. Welcome once again to AP European History Bit by Bit. Now listen, as we've been going through this, we've been taking a look at the Renaissance and I've mentioned the changes that the Renaissance art brought along with it. And now today we're going to take a look at one Renaissance artist that I think embodies the greatness of the Renaissance and that's Michelangelo. But before we get into looking at Michelangelo himself, we have to emphasize something very important. In order for Michelangelo to paint the most amazing paintings that he painted, to sculpt the most amazing things he sculpted, he had to have money. And in the Renaissance, the key to money is patronage. Real simply, patronage is when popes and princes commission works of art in order to enhance their prestige. If they have better looking stuff, if they have bigger, more awesome works of art around them, if they decorate their chapels, decorate their homes, or decorate their city-states with amazing works of art, that adds to their prestige and the prestige of the country around them. It's really quite simple. And so they pour money into the arts. And for the papacy, Michelangelo becomes the key artist of the Renaissance. So it's patronage that makes the difference. Understand, though, that while these guys are being given money in order to produce these amazing works, and they play with different techniques in order to try and enhance their skill, and they pay very close attention to making their figures lifelike and to making their figures look as natural and as realistic as possible. And Michelangelo is a master. So let's take a look at some of the works of Michelangelo. In the case of our first work by Michelangelo, the Sistine Chapel, this was commissioned by Pope Julius II. So here's a pope, and he's trying to decorate this main chapel inside of the Vatican. And what he does is he commissions Michelangelo to create uh, scenes from the early books of the Bible up on the Sistine Chapel. Now these become very, very famous, not just because of Michelangelo's skill, but because Michelangelo is just as concerned with the commission, that is, painting these scenes, as he is with showing off and developing his own knowledge of the human form. And as you can see with these pictures here, you can see that he's working to try and show musculature, he's working to try and show character, emotion. He's trying to develop all of these things within the confines of the patronage agreement that he signed. So yeah, he was a great painter, and that Sistine Chapel stuff, I mean, Ah, I tell you, I've been there. When you're standing in that room and you're looking up at that ceiling, it starts to hurt your neck because you're craning it so badly. But it's definitely, definitely worth a look. But what's amazing about Michelangelo is not only was he a great painter, and he didn't really think he was, he was an even better sculptor. Now while Michelangelo was a great painter, he was an even better sculptor. And this is perhaps his most famous work of all time, the David. This was commissioned around 1501 by the, uh, by the people of Florence, or at least some wealthy people from Florence, who wanted to decorate one of their buildings. And basically, short, long story short, uh, they commissioned Michelangelo in order to carve a replica of David, having just slain Goliath. When he does this, he tries to make, or he tried to make his depiction of David look as realistic as possible. And you can see the detail that he uses here. The veins bulge. His eyes gaze out. His muscles are there. Everything's in perfect proportion, showing the skill that Michelangelo had. Don't forget, one of the purposes here is to understand patronage. And the patronage of Michelangelo's David was to show off the greatness of the city of Florence, because Florence was in competition with other city-states in the fragmented area that was only vaguely known as Italy. They wanted to show that their city-state was better than all of those surrounding city-states. And having works of art like this showed not only the skill of their sculptors, but also the wealth of the people who lived there and the power of their city-state under the Medici. Michelangelo's Pieta. This work now sits in the Vatican, inside of St. Peter's Basilica, which, incidentally, we'll get to in a moment, uh, Michelangelo also designed. But this is an absolute perfect example of the humanist influence on Michelangelo's religious works. 
This depicts the scene of Mary holding Jesus after he's been pulled down off the cross, and you can see the level of detail that he puts into this, how he puts the emotion into her face, how he makes the folds of her dress look completely realistic, how the limp, lifeless body of Jesus looks, well, limp and lifeless. This is craftsmanship at its absolute best. Michelangelo was amazing. And therefore, the people who commissioned and the people who had this art were amazing. So, he's a painter, he's a sculptor, what else does he do? This guy seriously sets the bar so high, it's unattainable by the rest of us. He's an architect too. I mean, seriously, ease up, buddy. No, he goes and designs the largest freestanding dome of the time. He goes and designs the dome and the outline of St. Peter's Basilica, which will become, and still is today, the centerpiece of the Roman Catholic Church, and a beautiful one at that. Michelangelo was commissioned to really put the finishing touches on this massive building, and one of his biggest contributions was the highest standing dome in the world. Now, this is not only an amazing architectural feat, not only an amazingly beautiful cathedral, but it also showed the wealth and the power of the Catholic Church. Interestingly enough, however, St. Peter's Basilica has another story to it, and that's this. The money that it took to, to build this cathedral was collected through the sale of indulgences throughout all of Catholic Europe. These were pieces of paper that people could buy that would forgive them of their sins and help them enter heaven quicker. Now this is going to cause a problem because as these are being sold to finance St. Peter's Basilica, they're going to raise questions from other thinkers. Well, now just a sidelight here, if you go and visit the Vatican, you'll notice that there are guards standing around in very colorful striped uniforms. They look very old. Why? You guessed it. They were designed by Michelangelo. I mean, this guy was all over the place. So that's a look at the works of Michelangelo. Understand that these things were all paid for by the papacy. They were paid for by the donations of Catholics from around Europe to try and make papal Rome more impressive, have more prestige, to make the popes be able to say that they beautified what was really a pretty stagnant city prior to the High Renaissance. And they were successful. And even today, it draws millions of tourists every single year to come and just look at these things. Now that's impressive. If we can all create things, or if any of us can create things, which will last the test of time for 500 years, I mean, we've really made a difference. So that's it for this episode of AP Euro Bit by Bit. Hope you enjoyed it. Please hit subscribe if you like what you're seeing so you can get notified of new videos. Once again, my name is Paul Sargent. This is AP Euro Bit by Bit. Thanks for watching.